Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. This is a, an enclosure that uh, many of you regulars will recognise. This is our Pisletheria regardless. And this is our old female. Now uh, we've bred her on a, a number of occasions now and um, she's got another egg sac as we speak. Um, I can't remember, I think we did do a video of her last pairing and it was very, very quick. They literally, with these guys, the males literally run in, stab, and they're off. They're gone very, very fast. But the actual courtship itself is, is really quite interest, interesting. And you see them when they're waving and tapping away at each other. You see that yellow underneath in their legs and all this. They're very, very impressive. Now, uh, the common name is the, uh, the Indian Ornamental. And out of all of the pokies, I would consider... The regardless to be an ideal beginner's pokey because this and this is what we call them pokies this is just short for piece of theory so we just we just call them pokies for short now there's a number of them within this genus and the regardless is by far one of the calmest and i also think they're one of the prettiest as well i think there's uh, they're really underrated in terms of um, their looks. Everyone goes for the Metallica or the big Ornata, you know, things like that. But these guys are in a league of their own. They are absolutely gorgeous, really, really pretty. Now, um, what we're gonna do, we are, we're gonna take our backing board off. And she's been in here now. Um, I'll turn her around so you can you guys can see. And you can see there where she's webbed all of this up and that you can see how she's carried dirt and what have you and put it all on this webbing and that's completely sealed her in now i would imagine in this void in here by having all of this dirt and everything in the web probably helps to maintain a sense of humidity in here because it's literally seals the whole thing in it's really really quite clever uh, now the only other part that's open is the very very top piece up here but even that is thick web really really thick silk and you can see she's down there at the bottom and she's basically what they do is they hold on to the bark normally upside down so they're facing the floor and then she literally just holds on to that egg sac and then every now and again she will just rotate it and move it around and keep it all on the move and it stops them from um, settling you don't want them all settled down in the bottom because obviously the weight of the ones on top will affect them in time. So they keep moving them around. They keep rolling them around. And that keeps them all nice and healthy. Now, all being well, we have got a fertile egg sac. But we never know until we actually pull it. Now, we have in the past allowed this female to, um, uh, to hatch her own egg sacked out and um and there's always there's never been a problem she's really really good um but we're often asked why do we remove the egg sacs from the females now there's a number of reasons why we do this now if you imagine it's it's quite a dubious affair and some spiders can be um very very nervous around the the, the breeding time and some of them can eat their egg sacs for no apparent reason. It doesn't matter what we do, we can't pinpoint why did they actually eat that egg sac. You know, they could have been perfectly happy, but then something clicked, bang, they've ate it. Now, if you imagine that we have um, we get our female spider to molt out, and then we feed her up and we get her into condition, we then find a male, we then pair our spiders together when they're both in condition, ready for breeding. But this all takes time. Now, in some of our spiders, it might take eight, nine, ten months from the initial females molting to actually getting an egg sac at the end of it. Now, if we got something like the chillabrachis, where our females quite often will kill the males, it seems to be a part of their ritual that they actually take the male as well if that happens then we've lost our male so we've lost any future chance of doing anything with him if we then left our egg sac in with our female 
10 months down the line she decides to eat it, that's nearly a year's work gone down the pan and all for nothing, all fruitless. So in a lot of cases, it pays that once we've done all of this work and our female, we get her to have an egg sac, then we deprive her of that egg sac. And we can do that normally between, well, most literature is saying around about 30 to 35 days. Here in the Beastie Room, we are leaving our spiders a little bit longer. This girl now has been in here 41 days with this egg sac. So she's gone that little bit, a little bit longer, an extra week. Um, and that's because we could, we, we pretty much trust her. We, we know she's a pretty good mum. So we will, uh, we will leave that a little bit longer. Um, now the other reason that we, we remove the egg sacs is because if they hatch out in here and then they're everywhere, camera lady has a whole hell of a time trying to catch them all up. So because she's getting old now, guys, we, and we, we help her out and we take the egg sack away, save her a little bit of work. Only joking, she's only young, really. Mm -hmm. Right, so there is a number of reasons why we deprive the egg sacs. So, and, and they are just a, a couple of them. Uh, sometimes it could be a, a case of that um, we have a particularly rare spider, um, a particularly valuable spider. There's just not many of them. They can be valuable, not necessarily in terms of... Um, financial reward but they can be valuable purely because there just isn't many of them around and um, so then if we get a viable egg sac it's always a good good policy to take that egg sac at the earliest opportunity just to make sure that we can uh, hopefully get a few more now we're gonna see what we can do here hopefully you can see down in here and you'll be able to see what I'm doing now what we're going to do is I'm going to pull this piece of bark back um, and you can see it's, she's pretty much welded that to the wall. I could do with camera lady's step here. Now I don't know if um, what I'm going to do I'm going to get a quick shot inside of this with the phone so that when you guys watch this video you will see this bit of footage and we can just have a little look down in there and you can see how she's done so many different bits it's really really quite difficult Right, here we go, we can see now, and there she is, this is very interesting doing this one handed, right here we go, we're going to try and, try and get it from her now, I've never done this before, this is uh, very, very different way of doing this. Oh, we've got it. We've got it. There she is. Isn't she beautiful? Right. We can just have a little look down in there. And you can see now she's done so many different bits. It's really, really quite difficult. Here we go. We can see now. There she is. It's very interesting doing this one-handed. Right, here we go. We're going to try and try and get it from her now. 
I've never done this before. This is a very, very different way of doing this. Oh, we've got it. We've got it. There she is. Isn't she beautiful? Right. Well, hopefully, we'll push that back on there. And just pop this back in. And let's see what we've got. Let's see what we got. Right. As you can see, this is a very large, large egg sac. Now this is the uh, the top, and then this is the bottom underneath. You can see where it's where the edges are. Right, we can see this. All right, let's have a little look and see what we got. Never ceases to amaze me how beautiful and white this silk actually is. Stunning. Many, many layers here. Ooh. Right. Now, this is a very interesting one because this is something we don't really see here in the Beastie Room very often at all. In fact, this is probably a first that we've had come out like this. Now we've got nymphs here, but I'm sure you can see that really clearly. Get a nice close up and um, you will see in this egg sac here, we've got these black eggs here. Now these have um, these are bad. These are these are just no good at all. Then we've also got infertile eggs here as well. Now you'll see in here there's a slight there's a bit of discoloration in here. There's a little bit of moisture in here as well, and this is all coming down to the fact that we've got bad eggs mixed in with good ones. So we can. Um, we can see that we've got our nymphs here, and our nymphs are really nice. They're really, really cool. They're really good. And the vast majority of them are nymphs. There is literally just a couple of infertile eggs and a couple of these black ones. So these black ones are, um, they are just no good at all. And they're actually starting to go off. So they, they would in fact cause problems. You can see here how, because of the way they are, you see how they've glued that little lot together. So we will have to try and tease these apart now. And we will put a little bit of moisture on these. And then we will slowly but surely just tease them off. But this can actually upset a sack entirely. And this is what we were saying before, and you know, this is another reason why we pull our egg sacs because this particular egg sac here would have had maybe another three weeks or so before it would hatch naturally, before she would open it up. Now, within that three weeks, this whole lot could have gone bad and we could have lost everything, all of them. As we are now, we have probably got um, somewhere in the region of around about. 85% of this sack is really good, 90% maybe. So just a 10% of damage, but that 10% of damage can be a 100% disaster if left to its own devices. So it's very, very important. You know, this is, this is actually a really good case to um, highlight one of the reasons that, you know, we do pull these egg sacs. 
if you imagine if these were uh, a really valuable really rare spider we could have lost the whole lot by leaving them with mum now some species we leave with mum regardless things like our balfouri they stay with the mum and they, she hatches them out all the time um, and they're very good at it they you know i think we've had we, we do a lot of balfouris here and we've only had one egg sac that failed um, and that was with a new female she was it was her first her actual first um, egg sac so it could have been something to do with that or it might have just been a poor egg sac it could be any number of things so uh, they get left with them and um, and obviously um, our celadonia we leave them as well our trapdoor spiders we leave them with the egg sacs because they generally do a far far better job and in respect to the balfouri quite often um, the reports are coming back that quite often if an egg sac is taken away and done manually by us then it doesn't doesn't do well at all so you get a lot of losses so um, you know we have to do it on different species depending on on what they are is what we do so well this is still a really really good result i'm really pleased with this i say we've, we've probably still got 90 percent of this is is really really good so we've got our um our pot here and this is our, our normal nursery pot and then what we're going to do is we, we are literally just going to try and pull these out it's probably going to be easier to take out the bad stuff we'll just take out the bad we, and we'll take these ones here and we will sort them out later it's interesting how they've literally they got stuck on there So yeah, we will um, we will sort them out in a little while. So what we'll do is we'll just try and take out what we can of the bad stuff. And you can see here, some of these black ones have actually burst. So they're not looking that they're healthy. So you see that? It's just a mess. More stuck together there. Very, very interesting. Now this is, um, the, the bad ones are probably what's come from either infertile eggs or maybe fertile eggs that have just, just not done well. Now you can see that, I don't know if you can see this here. I'll put this in the palm of my hand. That's a bad, bad one there stuck on the side of a what looks to be like an infertile egg so you imagine this is literally just a disaster waiting to happen this is like a little time bomb within the egg sac and once it all starts going bad it's i suppose the, the easiest way to explain it would be like a carton of um tomatoes in your fridge you get one bad one and then it spreads that fur all over everybody, doesn't it? And then the whole the whole box of tomatoes is no good. And that is pretty much what happens inside your egg sac like this. You see, there's a number of these are, are literally stuck. They're going to take a little bit of work to get them sorted out. But it's not impossible. It's something we can do. We literally we're almost there. We'll just take these ones out. Some of them are just a little bit dirty. And we'll uh, go through them. Now this is something we really we don't get in the beastie room. This is uh, this is a strange one for us because normally, as you would have seen in in the previous ones. Our egg sacs are normally really nice and clean. Now we have got another female regardless, who's also on a an egg sac, and she is um, one that we bred here ourselves. So she is, if you like, a second generation, and and she's now in turn breeding herself. And we will pull her in a couple of weeks. She's not quite ready yet. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to pop this little lot 
in our pot. It'll be easier to deal with them there. Do they smell dangerous? No. No, there's a there's no smell to this. Um, I don't know if the actual no, there's no there's no smell, there's no odour to that at all. You see here this is another infertile egg. That one there. So we've actually it's still a really, really good success. There's a couple of infertile ones left in the pot. But you can see in them. I don't know if you can see that. So the actual nymphs that are there are um, in really good order. They're a lovely size and they will be nice, nice, healthy slings. They've got a few weeks to go. But we, what we can do is we will, um, we will follow these because these, these are a really interesting one. And we'll, um, we'll get some updates and we'll, we'll keep you informed as to how these guys are actually moving on and what they're doing and everything else. Now, um, in terms of uh, doing these, these are these are fine. You can move these over. And then I think there are actually huge great abdomens on these guys. Oh, a little good one there. He's actually welded shut, that one. Now, some of these we probably won't be able to save because they they are literally solid. And the black pieces are literally, they're like pieces of tar. They're going to be really, really difficult. All right. All right. You're going to have to bear with us, and we will see if we can't clean them up. And we'll do that, and we'll get a little bit of... Uh, we'll try and get a little bit of video on the phone, and uh, and we'll add it into the, into the shot later on. And we'll see if we're successful or not. But it is looking a little bit doubtful as to whether many of these here. There's only maybe, what is there, four, five, six, seven, eight, mm, mm. there's about 14 or so there. So that's not too bad. Out of a whole clutch, there's 14 there that we may lose. Um, but we will do our best to try and clean them up. All right, so what, what we're going to do now is um, we've got this number of young nymphs and uh, camera lady is now going to attempt to try and clean them up now as we said earlier the little black bits are almost like tar they've welded themselves to these young nymphs and as you can see it's not the simplest of things So we have to be very, very gentle and just take our time. As with most things in the uh, in the beastie room, patience is the main priority. There we go. Now you can see there, when that came away, it just released the legs. And as you can see there, they were all intact. That's looking good. Two down, a few more to go. Now, without a doubt, if um, if this sack had been left, there's a very high possibility that we would have lost all of them. As you can see there, some are not as bad as others. Some of them are just a little bit dirty. And this is where they've been rolled around in the sack and the bad eggs have been moved around. Bits and pieces have come off as they start to deteriorate. And this covers all of our young nymphs. And it, in turn, can um, basically infect infect everything. 
Now this is a, I've got two here stuck together. And you can see there that it's, um, it's not the simplest thing to actually try and separate them because these are very, very delicate. It doesn't take too much to actually pop one. And we noticed as we were going through that there was a couple of them that were very wet, that were damaged already. And uh, it's you can see there, you see there's a little bit of fluid there. And you can also see there that one nymph is actually quite strong and the other one is all looking, is, is finished. The one on the right hand side there, the crinkly one, he is no longer with us. And this would have caused problems in itself because that isn't actually a, a developed nymph. So when that starts to go bad, that will create infection within, within the actual egg sac. And as you can see here, this nymph here is fine. And you can tell that by the way it's holding its legs out. So it looks nice and strong. And you've seen with the other one, it was just all folded up. It weren't looking very good at all. And that was because it was in fact dead. There was no life left in it. And you can see it's harder when there's bunches of them together. It makes it a little bit more difficult to try and deal with them. And you can see now the importance of um, of having a nice steady hand. Very, very difficult. Now here we see here we got, um, what is that, there's four there I think. Is it three or four? They're actually glued together there. And as you can see there, as they start to break away, you can see that one there is moving. And it's difficult because you've got to try and put a little bit of pressure on the nymph to keep him in one place. While at the same time, you don't want to squash him. And you can see there that the, the actual the, uh, carapace of the nymph there is only a tiny, tiny segment there which holds the carapace onto the actual abdomen, which is that big yellow dot there, which is what we all class as the egg. That is, in fact, the, uh, the nymph's abdomen. And if you look at your adult spiders, you'll see that there is only a very, very small joint that connects the carapace of your spider to its abdomen. And this is why we often hear of um, people worrying about their spiders falling and the abdomen bursting because the abdomen is heavy and it's only held together very, very lightly. Now, this is all our bad eggs and this is what we've managed to save. So what we got there, 13. Yes, 13 out of, I think there was 15 in all. So Cameron Lady done really, really well there. We managed to save the lives of 13 young spiders. These will all grow up and become lovely, lovely little uh, regardless. Now this is the ones we've cleaned up the pot now and they're all inside there. And we had a grand total of 134 viable living nymphs. And as you can see there, some of them are just flexing their legs a little bit. It won't take these longs and these will, what we say, pop. They will pop into their next nymphal stage. And then they'll have one more molt and then there'll be slings. Wonderful stuff. A great success. Right. Well, I hope that was, um, was of, a, of an interest. I mean, that was something different. We really haven't seen that in the Beastie Room before. Um... So yeah, and this and it sort of highlights some of the reasons that, that we take take these egg sacs away. And uh, I'm sure if we had left these in there, we would have stood the chance of losing a lot more. So it's important that we do we do what we do. All right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys. <laughs>